All right, if I want to graph and label this equation, it's an ellipse, what you have to pay attention to is what's a squared, what's b squared. So what you should notice is a is going to be the square root of the biggest denominator. So the biggest denominator is 25, so a is going to be the square root of 25, so a will be 5. Now, b, b is going to be the square root of the smaller denominator, which is the 16, which is 4. Now, those are your two major points. So if I want to graph this, the 25 came from the x. So what that means is square root of 25 is 5 from the x. So what that means is, here's my center. This means we're going to go 5. And again, it comes from the x. So I'm going to go 5 on the x-axis in both directions. All right. Um, actually, that would be plus or minus. I should probably put plus or minus there because positive negative 5, positive negative 5, because you're square rooting and anyways, there, this was a squared. Anyways, it's positive negative 5. Now this one, positive negative 4, that came from the y. So what that means is you're going to go up 4 and down 4. So again, the b value comes from the y right here. The a value comes from this. Remember, the a always is from the biggest denominator. b is from the smallest. Anywho, now you have a little oval. It's, it's almost like circular, but this will be an oval. It's called an ellipse. Okay, not the best drawer of an ellipse. There's your ellipse. Pretty ugly. Didn't draw it too good. Anywho, so that's all you do to draw it. Then you got to find your focal points. And if you remember from your notes, it's c squared is equal to a squared, which is 25, minus b squared, which is 16. So that looks like c squared, that looks like, uh, what, 9. So when you square root both sides, you get c is equal to plus or minus 3. Now, your c value is always on your major axis. So if you look at this, your major axis, this is your longer one right here. So 3, so what that means is my focal, focal points are going to be right there and right there. Those are my two focuses, my foci. So my foci is plural for focus are going to be positive and negative 3 comma 0. Those two coordinates, that's negative 3, 0, that's positive 3, 0. Those are my foci. That's my graph. All right. Now, the next one. All I want to do is find the foci of this one. Now, is this in the same form as this? No. But can I change this to look like this? Yeah, the key to change this to look like this is to make it equal to 1. Here, I'm equal to 22. I want to equal 1. What to do, make it equal to 1, well, if I just divide by 22, was that 1? Yeah. So basically, I'm going to go over here and divide everything by that number, 22. Once I do that, well, what I got here is uh, I end up with x squared. And reduce 11 over 22, isn't that 2? Reduce 2 over 22, isn't that 11? And 22 over 22, isn't that 1? Now, what you'll notice is this form is exactly like this form. So if I want my foci, well, isn't this your a squared, your biggest denominator? So the formula is c squared equals a squared, which is 11, minus b squared, which is 2. And if we solve this, we'll get our foci. It's kind of cool. Once you get to this form again, a squared, b squared, subtract them. So c squared is equal to uh, 9. Hey, it looks like I thought like this problem. <laughs> so we square root both sides. So c equals plus or minus 3. Now, here's the question. Plus or minus 3, but which axis does that go on? Is it going to go plus or minus 3 this way and this way, or up and down? Well, look at the graph. Look right here. Look at your a value. What letter does it come from? The larger stretch is from the y. So if the larger stretch is from the y, this graph is going to look something like this. There are two focal points right there. So if this value, what happens is you're going to go up and down 3. So if I write those as coordinates, it's going to be 0 plus or minus 3. Those would be your foci. So be careful. A lot of times people put negative plus or minus 3 comma 0. But what you have to realize, again, is this is going to be stretching up and down. Last problem. If I want to write the equation for this graph. Well, let okay, me we go back to this form. All right. So we're going to have x squared over something plus y squared over something equals 1. Now I want to find the two numbers underneath. Well, to find the x value, what you do is you count over. How far is this? That's 7. 
So let's think. If a equals 7, doesn't that mean a squared is going to be 49? So wouldn't that be a 49 right there? And b, isn't b your shorter value? Looks like we're up and down 5. So if b is 5, actually we probably should put plus or minus. Plus or minus 5, well wouldn't b squared be 25? So wouldn't that be 25? So aren't your y values going up and down 5 and your x values going out 7? It's always equal to 1. That's simply your equation. Now, if your graph was stretching up and down, your bigger number would be under the y squared, your smaller number would be under the x squared. But this one is going left to right.